guys joining us today um, for uh, Friday. Um, at this point, as you all know, this is not an official meeting, so as such, in accordance with Section 52 of the County Law, resolution must be approved to authorize the, of this meeting. Um, as such, I would ask uh, Mike Thermal, the County Administrator, to read the title of Resolution 280. Resolution 280, authorizing the county legislature to hold a special legislative meeting on Friday, May 8, 2020 at 3 p.m. Legislature. Uh, may I have a motion? Motion. Motion. I have Robbie. Is that Robbie? I think it was Robbie. I have a motion by uh, Rob. Second. A second by Rich Potaker. Um. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Hall. Uh, just for the record, uh, is this a legal meeting? Does this have to be notified in a press Republican, or can we just do this at any time? Yeah, I'm answer. Go ahead. Mr. Zerl got it. So, so yes, uh, Mr. Hall, yes, in fact, it is a legal meeting. The press, in fact, was notified. Uh, the requirement is to do what we're doing at this point, which is upon the beginning of the meeting we passed this resolution with six affirmative votes uh, according to section 152 of the county law um, ratifying the call of the meeting is there any rules or regulations about what meetings you can call for a special meeting no you can you can call the well the chairman can direct uh the call of the meeting and whatever is in the notice is the sole purpose of the um, of the meeting, so you can't, you cannot have a meeting and discuss items other than what you told the public you were going to discuss. Thank you. Any further <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm opposed to it. Mr. Hall. Mr. Hall. Okay. Um, we have. Uh, Eight in favor, no. none opposed. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to call the official meeting to order at 3.05 p.m. Uh, the legislature now has an official meeting for the sole purpose of filling a vacancy in Area 8 on the Clinton County Legislature. So at this point, I would like to ask the folks here uh, to rise and join in the pledge. So, so everybody, uh, legislators, if you could please mute your phone uh, until you desire to talk, uh, that would reduce a bunch of feedback we're getting. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, Mr. Zirkle, would you please Mr. Castine. Present. Mr. Conroy. Here. Mr. Hall. Here. Mr. Henry. Here. Mr. Perrier. Here. Mr. Potaker. Here. Mr. Rosenquist. Mr. Timmons. Here. Ms. Waldron. Here. Quorum. Okay, we have a quorum present. Uh, I'll just give a, a brief summary why we're here. Uh, everyone knows, but um, as you are all aware, the only purpose, the sole purpose of this meeting is to appoint a person to the Area 8 vacancy. I would like to open this up for discussion of the appointment of a person from Area 8. Uh, so at this time we have discussion, Rob Timmons. Yes, Mark. Uh, I just want to say that the decision to temporarily appoint someone has not been an easy decision. It has taken bipartisan work to get to this point, and I think with the time frame of holding an election the first week of July, causing poll workers to have to work the 4th of July, as well as the cost of the election, I think having it in November with the general election is the right thing to do. Okay, thank you, Rob. Anybody else on discussion? Mr. Chairman? 
Uh, yes, Patty. Um, yes, I would also like to weigh in. This has been a, a um, one of these issues that we had to think long, hard, and clear about. Um, as I see this, uh, especially with the guarantee that that seat will be uh, up for election in November, which will be a special election, it absolutely, in my mind, I couldn't think of how it would make any sense um, for the town of Plattsburgh to spend up to eight grand at a time like this, and uh, and there are we're having a hard time on both sides to get candidates who want to run this election. And I've spoken to um, both parties, and I do believe in my heart of hearts that the right thing to do is not to have the election on in July, but have the special election in November, um, where everybody is out voting anyway and we haven't put anybody in jeopardy. That's all. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah, Chris Rosenberg. I'll, 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 I will yield to Legislator Hall. Oh, I, I'd like to hear. I'd like to hear from Mr. Rosenquist first. Yeah. So I I did send an email at strongly um, in support of a special election in conjunction with uh, what was then scheduled to be the uh, the presidential primary and uh, the uh, city of Plattsburgh uh, mayoral primary. And as such, you know, and, and things had changed, the, the presidential primary got canceled. And, you know, quite frankly, you know, the response to my email uh, was less than, uh, uh, I certainly didn't expect it to be so, um, I don't want to say negative, uh, I certainly didn't expect it to, to uh, get shut down so quickly. Understandably, why? I mean, like if I were on the other side of the aisle uh, looking at the advantage of having a, a special election during a, a Democratic primary I probably, or, or a Republican primary, I probably, too, would have that same concern. Um, and also, if, if I were to justify the, uh, the election using expenses, yeah, sure, that it probably is not the, the best way to justify it because the... the most cost savings would be yielded through an appointment. I did talk to uh, Legislator Hall. Uh, I talked to Legislator Aldrin and uh, uh, Francis, as well as uh, Mark Henry, about all the issues. And it, it's not easy um, to, it's certainly not easy, um, you know, politically it's not easy to, to say one thing and then have to change my mind and turn around and, and say another. So with that, and you know, Patty alluded to some of the expenses that are going to be incurred, monetary expenses that would be incurred by the town uh, in uh, around $7,000, $8,000. And I also spoke to, to Michael Cashman about the same issue. Uh, you know, certainly it's not easy to justify asking a town, um, the town to spend that amount of money uh, monetarily, but then also the fringe expenses of shutting down town hall uh, and taking care of their employees on top of the nine thousand plus dollars, the city of Plattsburgh would have to shell out um, to support a special election uh, during that first week of July. Uh, that being said, uh, you know I, I, you know, even in the last meeting, I was adamant against uh, a special election uh, or a, an appointment, given given the stipulation around uh, this person will not be running. I do currently support uh, an appointment. Uh, thank you. Uh, Legislator Hall, I'll move to you unless you'd like to wait. Oh, that's that's fine. Uh, I don't think it's any secret, and it's been all over the Press Republican about how I feel and, how, and what my vote is going to be. Uh, number one, uh, I'd like to hear from your candidate, man or woman, whomever it is, before this appointment's made, uh, which I probably won't vote for anyways, but I would like to hear, I would like to hear from that person, point blank, Telling me that he is not going to run, not not somebody else saying it. I'd like to hear from him or her. Uh, I'd also like to hear him or her tell me that they're not going to come out publicly, say at the end of in November, uh, been doing this job for six months, and I have a candidate. Uh, my candidate is Mike Zerlo, who's going to run in my spot, and I think that can, uh, I can help him out and do a fantastic. He'll do a fantastic job. I think it's totally wrong. I don't believe in this this process that we're going through. I would like to have a special election. Uh, 
Mike Cashman has called everybody that he can think of about this eight thousand dollars from the town of Plattsburgh, which I think is is not true. I think the fact is is this money has been budgeted for all kinds of primaries that were coming up, and there's money in there at the board of elections to take care of this. Uh, I, I think this is a bad idea. For six and a half years, we have we have been working together as a unit, and it's went over really good. Sometimes I've been I've been on the bad end. Uh, I can use an example as a Democratic chairman, uh, Sam Dyer appointed a Republican to take care of the airport when I wanted it. So it, it, we've been very impartial. And Sam, and let me say this about that: at the time, Sam did the right thing. Uh, uh, he appointed. Uh, Mike, give me help. Jimmy Langley. Uh, he appointed Jim Langley. Thank you, Mike. And and Jim had been doing the airport and been doing a fantastic job. So I've been on the short end of the stick. So it, it, but we've worked very good together. I think this is a very bad mistake, and I think it's going to come back to bite us. And, and I'm very sorry that my Democratic colleagues are not sticking with their guns and voting for a special election. But I, with that all being said, and I'm definitely against it, I, I would like to hear your candidate come out and tell us before this meeting, if anybody's voted on, if they're not going to promote somebody or not going to run. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Okay. Um, how about we go through the discussion, and I will arrange for the candidate uh, to tell you that. That's fine. Okay. Uh, before I, I end, know. before I end, Mark. Oh, we'll go through. Wait a second. Who am I missing? Uh, Aunt Mark. Yes. Before I end, I, I'd also like to add this to it. There have been Republican can, uh, legislators that are there right now that have said they wanted a special election. I think you people, being honest the way I think you should be and the way I think most of you are, should hold your conviction. If you said you wanted a special election, then you should vote for a special election. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank, thank you. Um, any, who am I missing? I know some folks had their hands up. Alvin? Thank you, Alvin. Yep. Uh, you know, without the uncertainties created by this pandemic, I think we can all agree that this uh, this appointment wouldn't be happening. But with all the circumstances that are presently surrounding us, I think this is by far the best alternative to serve the people of Area Eight and of Clinton County. I, uh, I've you know covered the uh, the last two special elections, and I thought they were appropriate. If it wasn't for the pandemic, I would be one hundred percent. Uh, going along with having a July election, uh, but I just think there's too many uncertainties, and that's my reason for for uh, uh, hoping that we have a, a proper appointment. And I think the person's name that we're going to be brought up uh, is uh, very well suited for this position. Okay. Anyone else? Francis. Yes, I'd like to uh, state the fact that in the beginning, when this first started, we first started discussing it. A special election was at the top of the list, but as things went on, we got certain information that gave a negative tone to the special election. People changed their mind, and I know a few people myself, and I myself included, I wanted uh, uh, an appointment, and then... I could see where the special election could happen, but then as I got information fed to me about how it's going to affect the taxpayers, how the price is, the, and uh, the member is it's a short campaigning schedule, the pandemic, the people can't go around knocking on doors, it's everything goes against it. So. I, at this point, an appointment, appointment is in the county's best interest, I believe. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Uh, something new or addition? Uh, oh, Rhett, go um, ahead. I see you. Yeah, so, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I, as a new legislator, I was uh, making, early on, making an argument for an appointment because I wasn't there during the last few changes that were done, the last few appointments that were made, um, and uh, several of the legislators on the Republican side um, 
convinced me that a special election would be better. Um, but then the pandemic came. COVID-19 um, changed everything. Uh, the cost of the election, though it was budgeted for the town of Blacksburg, um, does not necessarily mean that they can spend money on an election, even though it was budgeted. Um, everybody's going to have to be rewriting their budget. And I, uh, so I, I changed my support towards a special election, but then changed back towards an appointment because of the situation we're in today. I think it changes everything. Okay. Anything else to add? Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, I, I just would like to respond to Legislator Hall, um, Hall's response. I respect Bob immensely. Um, I feel that this is bipartisan, um, working together in the best interest of the public. I also feel that we can trust our Republican colleagues. We look them in the eye every day. Um, I don't feel any distrust. I believe that they're going to place somebody in that seat to save the taxpayers' money and also uh, to prevent all types of scenarios that could happen during an election on July 7th with so many question marks. It's only going to be a matter of five months that somebody's sitting there, and then November comes, and it's still a special election. Therefore... It just makes financial sense. It makes sense all the way around. And I, I choose to trust my Republican colleagues. Thank you. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? Yes, Chairman uh, Simon Conroy here. Yes, go ahead, Simon. Yes, I, I would just like to say that um, I, I think giving it time so that we can have a a real election in November. It will obviously be in the press, and people can, you know, we can see what candidates arise, and it will give people time to actually campaign and have a chance to uh, be involved in the process and, you know, give, give more people a chance to, to try to, to be the legislator. So, so I am in favor of the... Um, the appointment now and the special election November. All right. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Uh, Legislator Timmons, I believe uh, you have a name to put forward. Is that correct? Uh, you muted? Yeah, mute. We're having trouble with Rob. Uh, Legislator Perrier. Yes. Walk. Well. <laughs> <laughs> you have a name to put forward what? at this time? Yes. Pat McGill. Okay. We have a nomination for Pat McGill. Do I have a second? Uh, seconded by Mr. Castine. Well, well uh, the Chairman, yeah. we're, not, we're not voting on this. No, we're so, not going to vote yet. So, not, so now that we have a name, Mr. McGill, I think it's appropriate because of Mr. Hall's questions that you reach out to Mr. McGill. Okay, so with, 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 we'll, we'll do any sort of voting when we get to the resolution. Yes, thank you. That's what I'm doing right now. Uh, give me a minute. Uh, can you put that on mute for just a second? For those of you watching at home, uh, Chairman Henry is contacting the uh, he's on his phone. We can't quite see him here in the middle of the picture, but he's on the phone, apparently contacting uh, Patrick McGill.
former judge for Clinton County area. Uh, and when he comes back, then we'll probably hear from him. Hold on a second. Um, the reason I have Mr. Uh, Mr. McGill on uh, speakerphone, um, I just uh, advised him that uh, uh, some of the legislators uh, would like to hear uh, from Mr. McGill uh, if, if he is uh, uh, elected to, uh, to be appointed, um, that uh, he would not accept uh, the nomination to run in November. So I'll let uh, Judge McGill make his statement. Um, and uh, we'll see if you have any questions. Go ahead, Pat. Good afternoon, y'all. Uh, I understood and do understand that should I get appointed, uh, that, that I would not run or even think about it in November. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a given. So I am simply a means to fill a chair and help out with whatever needs to be done on the legislative body until. Just a second. Uh, can everybody hear that okay? Yeah, okay. There yes. There. Yes. Yeah. All right. Does anybody have any further questions for the judge? I think Bob wanted to uh, hear that he wasn't going to support or help somebody. I help believe somebody can help. Yeah. yeah. I, don't know if can, I don't know if you can hold somebody's First Amendment rights like that, but let me see. Uh, Judge, I know you couldn't hear that, but um, I've had you on cell, obviously. That's all right. Um, Legislator Hall, I believe, has a question for you. You just hold on, Legislator Hall. Um, my question was, is in the fall, will you be campaigning or working for somebody in the Republican Party to fill the seat that you're going to be filling? No. your honor uh, I think it's an honor to have you on on the legislature I'm, I'm not against you as a person for filling this spot we are going to need all the help we can get when it comes to this budget session so having you on the, on the legislature is in my opinion is a very good thing I am against appointing you because I feel it should be a special election nothing to do with you personally I understand it, and I, and I think it's the fair way to go in, in the sense of uh, why spend money for a single election if this doesn't make any sense to me uh, at this time here. And uh, I think we're all doing this virtually. Uh, if I don't provide uh, uh, all I can to complicate things even further. So I, I, I'm happy to fill a bill and see if I can help. Uh, and make, help make decisions that need to be made, and uh, I'll do the best I can. And I have no desire to continue. I'm 74 years old. I retired from a 27 year term of action. I, I don't need the job for that way. I'm happy to be there and happy to help if I can. All right. Thank, thank you, Judge. Any, anyone else for, for Pat, for Mr. McGill? All right, hearing nothing, so let Mr. McGill go. Thank you very much. We'll be in touch. Thanks. Thanks. Bye-bye. Okay, uh, you read the resolution? Resolution 281. But we'll just do it and then have discussion after that. Yes. Yes, sir. Resolution 281. Appointing Patrick R. McGill as a member of the Clinton County Legislature. Legislature. Uh, do I have a motion? 
I move the motion from Francis. I, do I have a second? I'll second. I have a second from Patty. Any further discussion? I'm appointing Mr. Miguel. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Do we need Mr. A, Mr. 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 Hall, Mr. Do we need a roll call? Uh, yes, uh, we don't need so, one. We so, certainly do one. Uh, the, the, a, well, you could have a full roll if somebody um, motions for the full roll and there's a second on that motion. Uh, that being said, Legislator uh, Castein, uh I, I think we've completed the vote with one negative, uh, Mr. Hall. So it's, it's probably a moot point at this point. Yeah, we would do that. We would do the roll on, on, a, on a motion in a second. But I mean, it's 8-1. Right. I'm fine with it, obviously. Okay. Any other questions on that? Okay, I'll, take a, I'll uh, entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll move. Uh, Francis, move. Do I have a second? Second. Second by... Who was that? Robbie. Rob. Uh, Rob, okay. Motion by Francis, second by Rob. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, we are adjourned. Thank you very much. <laughs>